You cannot right. go to Philippines anymore. What do you mean I can't go? I got the ballot buy-in program behind me. I can go anytime I want and stay a year. Oh, yeah? No one's going to bother me. No one's going to have some air. And I go fly right into Cebu or Manila. And I got my run. I have a place I can go, hop to any island I want, and well. have fun and enjoy my life and fly my drone again <laughs> and make videos that we like to make instead of being Sounds stuck good. here. But it's too bad because they change the rules now that all foreigners have to have a visa, even if you're married to a Filipina or Filipino. What, what rules? What visa? Where? To Philippines. You cannot enter anymore. You have to have... Yes, I did. That's new rules from release it yesterday. The press release? Yeah. From yesterday? Yeah. Read it. From August 8th? Yes. Yeah, it's pretty depressing. Really, guys. <laughs> I gotta be honest. Yeah, alien spouses of Hanoi's need visas to enter. Philippines. In the Philippines, the Bureau of Immigration told foreigners who have Filipino spouses and dependents that they can only enter the Philippines if they have the appropriate visas. So I have to get a visa before I go, just like everybody else. And it's only good for 30 days, and I assume they're going to make you reapply after 30 days for the next 60-day uh, visa. I'm not sure, but I'm guessing that's how it's going to go until they decide to go back to the old old ways. Even our daughters and kids, Brianna and Bryson. Yeah, you can't even bring your kids over, can you? Nope, needs Unless to have a visa. visa. Unless and they are a Filipino citizen. Right, and yeah. they were born in the USA, so that won't work. Yeah, I have to apply dual citizen for both of them. Yeah, so things are just getting crazier and crazier in the Philippines. They're making it so hard over there right now. Yeah, it's crushing their, their population, their tourism. Uh, they are going to make a lot of money on forcing foreigners to have uh, swab tests, uh, which I really don't want to do. I object to that 100%. I don't want them sticking anything foreign up my nose. Uh, I don't care uh, how fantastic they think it's, it's, it needs to be done. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I, we are going to, what are we going to do in the meantime? We're going to wait for this to stop? We might just wait until it stops, you know? Yes, but that's... Because over here, it's uh, even if it's kind of locked down, we can still go everywhere. But over there, it's kind of hard for now, especially in this pandemic going on. Yeah, the pandemonium, it's mostly all fear. And um, yeah, let's uh, decide what we're going to do. We're going to have to stay here for a few more months, maybe to the uh, end of the year, beginning of the next year. This uh, This seems to be kind of... A fluid situation where they're changing this, uh, modifying these requirements every couple of weeks. Yeah, it says it's temporary, but we'll see. They have, they have another rule last week, and all of a sudden, a week later, or something, they change it again. So a lot of people are kind of mad right now, especially foreigners that they already bought the ticket to Philippines, like they're flying the next week or tomorrow. Now that they change the rules, they cancel their ticket and the hotel. So I read about some comments. And, the, and their website in the Bureau of Immigration, the, the foreigner guy already have the ticket and booked the hotel, so he canceled everything and he said he lost some money yeah. because of the new role. So I don't know what's going on in there. It's costing foreigners a lot of money and they're going to get tired and fed up with it. You yeah. know, find yeah. another country to go to. I don't know. It's very sad. You know, it's really hard on the uh, Filipino people over there that rely on the foreigners for. Uh, taxis and for uh, hotels need the revenue. Everybody relies upon uh, foreigners coming over there. We spread around a lot of a lot of uh, wealth. You know, uh, people rely on it. You know, and we do what we can to help people when we're over there too. Just like uh, most of the foreigners go over there, are pretty generous. So this is making a really uh, a hardship on the people of the Philippines. It's just horrible. So it's kind of too bad right now that the husband. Foreigners is over here and the family over there, like the wife or the kids, they can't see each other until the foreigner have a visa here. So you're going to apply a visa and you're going to wait one month maybe or two months. We'll see how, how it takes, you know, before you can reunite with your family to Philippines. Mm -hmm. They make it so hard. Yeah, like we're kind of excited to travel also a few months from now and all of a sudden this is going on. So you're going to apply your visa? Over here with the kids. <laughs> no, because I don't want to be quarantined when I get there. 
Uh, that's another thing uh, they're going to force you to do, and you have to pay for that. Um, I mean, I might put up with one of the things, but I'm not going to put up with all three. No ballot buy-in program, uh, the mandatory swab test, uh, and uh, the mandatory quarantine. I'm not going to put up with all three of those things, but uh, I might put up with one of them. I think the, the best thing to do for now is wait until this thing is over and until they do another rules, delete yeah. go these rules. You know what I mean? I have to relax the rules, so. Maybe we just wait. Well, we have to wait now. Yeah. yeah. We can't just do, go like right now and this thing going on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, see, and they're, I know they're waiting for the next vaccine and um, you know, that's something that we're not going to do. We're not going to participate in that, but we are interested in in the uh, treatments, uh, the therapies that they've come out with. Um, I think that's really <clears throat> very promising. So we will put a link to this press release uh, in the description below, and you can look at it yourself. There's a lot more to it, yeah, it's uh, but basically that's it. It's only a couple pages, really. So there you go. You can check that out for yourself, and uh, we're going to keep an eye on this to see how it how it changes over the next few weeks. Yeah. I think it'll change again in two weeks. I think so, because I saw it's temporary, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our lease here is good until um, April 5th, so we have to give a 60-day notice when we leave, leave this place. Yeah, and, and after that, if this um, Bureau of Immigration in Philippines, if they have more wars than this, we're not going to go over there. Yeah, well, if it gets if it doesn't get any better, we're gonna make other plans just to stay here. Yeah. We're gonna have to just stay here and uh, buy a house. And uh, maybe it's not for us over there. <laughs> I don't know. It's losing. It's supposed to be easy life. Or, yeah, you know. the government's making it uh, more. It's becoming more and more oppressive, and it's all driven by fear, which is unfounded and unproven scientifically. Uh, it's so sad, you guys, because I look at the Philippines and, and statistically they have one of the lowest mortality rates um, for this, um, so I call it the zombie virus, uh, because everybody wears face masks and uh, it's, they're all kind of scared walking around like, they look like zombies if you look at them all when you go into the grocery store or anywhere. You can't see anybody's pretty faces anymore. They're all covered up and they say it's for the common good. Well, don't forget, guys, that's what uh, the good Germans said in Germany during World War II um, when the uh, Nazis were exterminating the Jews. They said, can't you just get along and, and uh, go along with the program? Well, I think we should be questioning everything right now, and we certainly do. Uh, so you guys, uh, just, just keep an eye on what's really going on because a lot of people are suffering over nothing. Um, this uh, statistically is turning out to be just about as bad as the annual flu, and yet um, the countries have been just ruined and people have been oppressed. So we're not um, going along with that. And, uh, you know, uh, we do wear a um, mask, and, mask, and as you guys know in our earlier videos, when we were in the Philippines, you saw us wearing masks. You know, here it is right here. I got a yeah, I do wear a mask in Philippines over there. I got a, a box of masks, but I plan to wear these in the Philippines. Uh, I don't wear them here in America, um, as you saw in the last video. And a lot of you didn't like that video because I'm not playing along with the, this uh, zombie virus uh, because there's actually statistically uh, there's no backing uh, for all the fear and drama and pandemonium going on. But in the Philippines, I did wear a mask. Oh yeah, we I wear it all the time over we there. We believe that they are useful, and the study we've done um, shows us that they are useful when it comes to bacteria, uh, dust, pollu dust pollution. Po pollen, pollution, stench, you know. And there's plenty of places in the Philippines where, you know, you have uh, people burning banana leaves, or, mm -hmm. or you're driving your Trust motorcycle. <laughs> oh yeah, trash can, open sewers, you're riding your uh, motorcycle. You know, past a pig farm, um, all kinds of things like that, because um, the masks do work. From what we've studied, they work for bacterial um, mm -hmm. issues. So, and it does help against that nasty cough people get there in their lungs and their uh, their throat uh, from that. Yeah, it really bacterial. helps for me over there. When when I wear a mask, I don't get the cough. Yeah, you know? yeah, it really does help against that. Uh, but uh, when it comes to viruses, they're um, uh, really ineffective. Uh, it's still, if I was sick, if I was sick uh, with anything, uh, I would wear a mask. 
uh, even even this virus here. Yeah, like like when we are in Philippines. But I'm before. not sick. Yeah, you're not sick. Like, just like when we are in the Philippines before, I kind of get used to wear mask, and then when we arrive here in America, I I put my mask on and I went to the to the store, and all of a sudden, the people are looking at me like. You crazy? Why are you wearing masks? Yeah. And now, if you don't wear masks, they told you, put your mask on. Yeah. Well, we <laughs> were so we were so used to wearing these from the Philippines that um, when this pandemonium first began here about five months ago, I, uh, we were the first ones to wear masks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people were looking at us in stores, going, Yeah. Oh, you don't have to wear that, you know, unless you're sick. So then, by us wearing them, people thought we were sick. And you know, and this is exactly what the, uh, the gods at the CDC uh, tried to tell us in the in the very beginning. They all told us that they weren't necessary. They said they weren't necessary unless you were sick, you know. And uh, social distancing was uh, enough, but they weren't necessary. And that was from um, the head of the CDC and all of his uh, cohorts over there. And it was also from uh, all kinds of. Uh, uh, spokesmen on television, all the all the major networks are telling us the same thing. They're all parroting the exact same thing. And I hope you guys can remember back five months ago when this all began. We were all told, don't wear a mask. You don't need it. They're not necessary. They're not effective. So now they're telling us just the opposite. They want to close. They wanted to close down. They did close down the country. They destroyed a lot of people's wealth and they ruined their businesses. And funny, this is all during an election year. So what do you think this is really behind all this? So you have to ask yourself, uh, um, and, you know, and ask the gods at the, at the CDC if they want us to uh, bow down and worship them or if we can worship our own God. Because they won't let you even go to church and worship your own God. Yeah, that's the thing. They should not close the church because church is no right. the time that you, pl you pray, you know. Supposed mm -hmm. to be relaxing time and pray over there. So my question is uh, regarding the masks in the very beginning when they said don't wear them, didn't need them. Now, were they lying then or are they lying now? And I know all the statistics they've been telling us from the beginning and all the forecasts and all the modeling of this uh, pandemonium, pandemic, all incorrect. All incorrect, and even the mortality rates they have today are vastly incorrect, and they're finding that out too. Uh, I just saw a, a news article from a local station here in Florida that showed that 300 of the, of the test sites where they were doing the COVID testing came up with 100% of all the testing was positive. And because that was so suspicious and impossible that there was an investigation and they uh, uh, after the investigation, they concluded that they were 90% incorrect on those uh, the positive uh, tests that were done. So you had 90% of them were falsely tested positive. So all that was to create fear and more drama, and it's been shown throughout the country in Texas and other states too. So you really can't believe much of what you're hearing from them, and I hope you guys know this, and you're not driven by fear. Fear is the worst thing in the world. It happens um, in all uh, the wars in history. Uh, people have been oppressed through fear. And this is the worst fear I've ever seen in my life, in my whole lifetime. Yeah, this, is know, the first, this is the first thing happened to me too. Like, well, I've seen worst uh, protests during Viet the Vietnam era, but this is the worst, worst fear uh, epidemic I've ever seen in my lifetime. And it's crippled people's um, ability to think clearly, uh, they've lost their uh, patriotism. Uh, so anyway, this is what I was, just want to say today. And that, yeah, I, I do believe in wearing masks when they're appropriate or against bacteria and other things like that. But uh, they've already been proven not to be effective, very effective at all uh, against viruses. So uh, if you're like me, you'll, you'll use the medical exemption, exemption and stop wearing them because it's really unhealthy. So unless you are sick, you unless have to wear you are it. sick, yeah. unless you're sick and who's sick. I don't even know one person that's had COVID-19, not one. Uh, all I know is what they tell me on TV and we don't watch TV because we're sick of listening to all the lies. I still wear it when I go to the store, me and the kids, because yeah, like in the I, don't have, I don't have John over there. And if I don't wear it, there's a big uh, woman, American woman over there. They will scream at me. 
put your mask on. And that, of, of course, I'm sensitive, so I have to put my mask on. Right. And she has the two babies with her, so <laughs> Brianna and Bryson. So I, I understand that, uh, but uh, when I'm with her, they don't do that. Um, one guy tried to do that to me when I was by myself uh, shopping uh, at Walmart recently, and uh, we kind of had it out, and I explained to him the uh, uh, Title II or the federal uh, civil rights laws and some other things, uh, uh, HIPAA and uh, the ADA. So uh, he really can't even open his mouth because that's a legal violation. So I'm not afraid of standing up to people, and I think we all got to uh, grow a backbone and stand up and uh, and get off the fear uh, wagon because um, that's how you lose your freedoms. And we've lost a lot of freedoms and Americans have been bent over and taken it, you know. So think and remember the lessons of history of all the vaccines and uh, all the vaccine drama that always happens around election times. You can go back to 1976 to the swine flu uh, pandemonium that happened and it was actually uh, coined as a swine flu fiasco of 1976. And there was an election happening then, and um, the incumbent lost the election because of all the chaos. And that was uh, Gerald Ford lost the re-election uh, during that, that chaos and uh, the fear that was created. And a lot of, they tried to uh, force vaccines on people and a lot of people were damaged. Uh, and some people died from the vaccine and they put an end to all that and uh, no longer made it mandatory. So uh, that the same thing is going to happen here. They're going to try to make this next one uh, mandatory. And that's why all this fear is being created. It's because of the election that's coming up here in the next few months. And it's um, also because uh, of the uh, new, uh, the proliferation of the new vaccine, which they're rushing into the market. And that's the very last thing you want to do is rush a vaccine onto the market, which is untested, unproven, and should always be a matter of free choice. Okay, guys, so that's all for today, and that's the latest update from the Philippines. Uh, we'll come back and give you an update in another couple of weeks when we see what's going on. And you guys uh, have a great life. Think freely. Don't be afraid of anything. Uh, grow a spine if you don't have one. Uh, go find it wherever you left it, and have a great life. Just pray and keep safe. And most of all, don't forget, keep the faith. Thanks. See you guys. Bye. Bye.